Hello everybody, this is Homer White back again with the second supporting video for the data analysis report uh, for Chapter 3 assignment. So in this video we're going to see how you would create uh, such a data analysis report from an R Markdown document. What I'm going to assume is that you've opened up the Chapter 3 actual assignment data analysis report and you have uh, saved it into your own submit folder, having given it a proper name. So notice that the name for my report is DAR Chapter 3 underscore my username dot RMD. And I've saved that into my submit folder. I've also gone ahead and given it an appropriate title, and I have uh, given my name and the date. Remember, what we're doing here is pretending that the example assignment was the actual assignment, and we're going to show how you would build up a document somewhat like the uh, example that was shown to you in the first video. So we leave, we leave aside the other parts of the front matter. We leave aside the first code chunk that loads all of the packages that are necessary for this project. We also aren't going to change anything in the introduction. However, when we read the introduction, we see that in order to really understand this project, we're going to have to learn about the UC Davis, UC Davis data set that comes from the TigerStats package. So it would be a pretty good idea right now to run the three commands that we use to learn about a new data frame. So with my cursor inside the chunk, Control-Alt-C, and I begin to learn about the data frame. Looking at the research question, I see that it is, do liberal arts and non-liberal arts students at UC Davis differ in their seating preferences? I know it's going to be important in the methods section to do a variable analysis, so I'm going to have to find out what are the two variables in, that da in the UC Davis data frame that pertain to my research question. So one variable appears to have to do with seating preference. Another has to do with someone being a liberal arts or a non-liberal arts student. Let's see what this all might mean. Looking at the help, I do see that there is a variable called seat, spelled with a capital S. It's a factor variable with levels back, front, and middle and it says where you prefer to sit in class when you have a choice. Also, looking further down in the help, I see there's a variable called class, all lowercase. It's a factor variable, and its levels, its possible values, are liberal arts or non-liberal arts. So that's the, the type of student that you have, of somebody with a liberal arts major, uh, like one of the humanities, or or a hard science like physics or chemistry, or someone with a pre-professional type of major like education or engineering or something else. So we've identified the two types of variable, the two variables that pertain to the research question. We continue our variable analysis, so we decide what types of variable they are. They were both factors, and we can also decide uh, which one we want to be the explanatory variable and which one we would like to be the response. In this case, why don't we make uh, seat be the explanatory variable since we can imagine that we might like to use where someone is sitting to predict what kind of major they have. So looking carefully at the directions in the methods section, we do indeed need to do this variable analysis and then choose the methods that we're going to use in this project to examine our research question. Since it's two-factor variables, obviously I'm going to use such things as two-way tables and row percents and bar charts for my descriptive statistics. For the inferential statistics, I'll be using chi-square test GC. So I need to put in a discussion for my methods. Let me go ahead and type for a while. All right, I finished typing. I've described my variable analysis and the methods, and you see that if I would like uh, to boldface something, and it's common to boldface the names of variables and data sets, then I put what I would like to boldface in between 
uh, pairs of stars. Also, if I would like to make bullet items, I do so as follows. I have a star at the very beginning of the line, then a space, and then the item that I would like to be bulleted. Star, and another space, and then the next item that I would like to be bulleted. It's a good idea to knit up your results as you go to see if they're looking good. Let's knit. Looking good so far, I got my bullet items, and I was able to get boldface where I wanted it. On to the results. We're going to have both descriptive and numerical results, so we've got a subsection for descriptive results. Notice that we get sections with a pound, and then a space, and the name of our section. For subsections, it's two pounds, then a space, and the name of your subsection. Descriptive results really come in two forms. There's numerical descriptive results and graphical descriptive results, so we decided to go with subsections for them. Three pounds for the sub-subsection and numerical descriptive results after a space, and a similar sub-subsection for graphical descriptive results. Let's check the directions here. So I'm going, I need to use my numerical results to describe the pattern, if any, that I found in the data, and my focus should my, my discussion should focus on using that data to address the research question. Probably the best way to begin to um, write up some results is to uh, insert the code that you need to produce them. So for numerical descriptive results, I'm going to want a two-way table, and then I'm going to want to make row percents from it. Let's insert the code chunk to make a two-way table. Chunks, insert a chunk, or the Control-Alt-I shortcut, shortcut. Now, I would like to produce the table for the reader, but without showing the reader the code that I use to do so. This can be done with a, adding a chunk option. After the R, put a space, and then write echo equals false. Now any code that you put inside this chunk will not be shown to the reader, but it will be run when the document is knit up and the output will be shown to the reader. So I need to decide how to make a two-way table out of my data. At this point it might be a good idea to try uh, some scratch work. You could, if you wish, open an R script this is a special script that allows you to type in just code. And then you can write the code in that you want into that script and give it a try. If you think it works out, you can copy it into your R Markdown document. Let's give this a try. I already have a scratch work document open. So I will go ahead and try to make a two-way table for this situation. So why don't I call it seat major? It's going to examine the relationship between where you prefer to sit and the type of major liberal arts or non-liberal arts that you have. So I need to do X tabs, twiddles, the explanatory variable, which was seat, with a capital S. Is that right? Let's check the data frame again. Yes, seat. Okay plus the response variable, which was class. Is that right? Yes. OK. Data equals the data frame. What's the name of the data frame? UC Davis 1, as we see from the help, UC Davis 1. And then we would like to print it out. If you want to run something in an R script, then you need to select the parts that you want to run, press run, and sure enough, we get a table. So this code's likely to work. I'll copy this code, 
and stick it into the code chunk that I created. I also would like a code chunk to make row percents. So control alt i and I will again do eval equals false so that I don't show the code and then I'll take row percents on seat major. I'm pretty sure that I remember that that's the right code for row percents so I don't feel the need to try that out in scratch work somewhere else. But I will give it a try now to see if it works. Yes, it worked. Next, I'm going to have to do the appropriate introductions to these objects and discussions of this output in my report. So I need to start typing, beginning by introducing the two-way table. All right, I've finished adding my discussion. It's a good time to knit up and see if things are looking good. Yes, here's my introduction to the two-way table, followed by the two-way table. An introduction and motivation for taking row percents, followed by the row percents, and then a little discussion of what those row percents are showing me in terms of the research question. Looks pretty good. On to the graphical descriptive results. So I read the directions for the graphical descriptive results. I notice that I'll need a graph with a good title. As two-factor variables, so I know I need to make a bar chart. So I'll insert a code chunk. Again, I think I will decide not to show the code to the reader. And then, either heading to my scratch work or trying it out right here in the console, I can try to write up the code for a bar chart. So one way or another, I find a good way to make a bar chart and I'll type it in. So you can see that I have decided to make a percentage bar, bar chart. The title is Type of Major by Seating Preference. Notice that I put in the name for the two-way table that I've already made. That saves me typing. Let's see if this will produce a good bar chart. Looks like that'll be all right. So I just need to add some text introducing the bar chart and discussing it. So I begin introducing the bar chart and start typing. All right, I've inserted my text. It's another good time to knit to PDF and see if everything is going well. Looks good. The introduction, then the bar chart, then the discussion. On to the inferential results. Reading the directions, I see a need to state hypotheses clearly. That means I'll be stating a null and alternative hypothesis. How might we write the math for a null hypothesis? If you'd like math, then you surround what you would like in dollar signs. Dollar sign. Null hypothesis, that's a capital H. But I'd like a subscript of zero. For a subscript, you can put an underscore and then the number zero. Then another dollar sign ends the math. Now I can begin writing out what the null hypothesis says. Similarly for the alternative hypothesis. If you want math, dollar sign, H. Now for a subscript, underscore, and the little a in the math with another dollar sign and go on to type the alternative hypothesis. Let's see if this is really making math by knitting it up. It worked. Of course I need more discussion so I'll have some more typing here. There, I've written up a fuller introduction to the idea of inference. 
and stated the hypotheses clearly. Now we need to actually produce the chi-square test output. That's going to involve another code chunk. And I won't show the results to the I will and I won't show the code to the reader, so again, echo is false. For a chi-square test, we use chi-square test GC. And I can put in the two-way table. That was the seat major. And let's give it a try. Control-Alt-C to run this chunk. Let's look down in the console and see if everything's going all right. Pearson's chi-squared test, the observed counts, the counts that the null expects. Here are the contributions to the chi-square statistic. Turned out to be 3.053. If the null is right, you should get around 2, give or take some. The p-value is 0.2173. I don't get a warning. That's because my sample size was big enough so that the expected cell counts were all at least 5. There won't be any need for me to do simulation in this project. Back to the document, I just need to introduce these, this output and do the appropriate discussion of it, all of the steps of the chi-square test. So back to typing. I've written in my discussion, probably time to knit to PDF and see if everything looks good. Yes, the output appears without the code that produced it, and here is my discussion. So we need to go to the discussion and conclusion section. I'll wrap things up for the reader and give the general conclusion that there appears to be not much evidence in this study for a relationship between seating preference and the type of major for UC Davis students in general in the population. So back to more typing. All right, let's knit it up again and see if everything looks good. Seems like the discussion came out well. One last check. Is the title good? The author? Is the date more or less accurate? Are the section headings the right size? Do I have subsections and sub-subsections that appear to be the right size? Everything seems to check out all right. One last thing might be to do a spell check. To do a spell check, head to the top of your document, and after the code, put your cursor, and then under Edit, you can check spelling. and you can decide what changes you might want to make. After the spell check, probably one final knit to PDF is a good idea. And then you're ready to submit your document. Remember that you do want to save your very final version. Whenever you knit, you'll save your copy, but if you make any changes after knitting, then you need to either press save or knit again in order for those changes to be registered in your submit folder. Let's take a look into your submit folder now. Sure enough, there's the document. The R Markdown document is right here, and the PDF is right next to it. All you really need in your submit folder is the R Markdown document. If I ever need to see your PDF, I can knit myself. Well, that's it on how to produce a data analysis report from an R Markdown document for the Chapter 3 assignment. Thank you for listening.